Hi everybody, it's Amanda from the PB team coming today with our weekly Instagram live. Um, so today we've got a very special speaker joining us. Um, some of you probably, well, definitely know who he is already. Um, his name is Jules von Hepp. He's a celebrity spray tan artist, the author of Get Body Posse, and he's the creator of self-tanning brand, um, The Isle of Paradise. And today he's gonna to be talking about three kind of key issues how to stay mentally healthy during coronavirus lockdown, which I think a lot of us could do with some advice on that. He's going to be talking about how he made it big in the industry and the key lessons he's learned along the way. And also he's going to be talking a little bit about how tanners can prep their business ready for when they can reopen. Um, I've just seen that he's sent a request. So, oh, well, I could see it a second ago and now I can't see it. Um, ah, here we go. So I'm just going to add Jules in now. So if you just bear with me a second, and he should be here. Okay, it's just connecting. Thank you everyone for joining. Hope you're all well today. Hi, Jill. Greetings. Hey. So nice to see you. How are you? Oh, I'm very good, thank you. Happy Friday. Oh my God, it feels so good that it's Friday today. Like, I think this week's felt very different from the others. And I'm like, Friday has arrived and I'm so ready for this weekend. Me too, I'm ready for gin o'clock. <laughs> amen amen i'm sure in most households it's gin o'clock now no judgment i know no judgment i wish i had a gin <laughs> in my hand right now but i wanted to make sure that i was on form for this <laughs> cohesive yes it's advised yeah so jules thank you for joining today um it's amazing that you could be with us i mean you're such a big name in the industry but and and you've got a really good um name in the industry but also because you're such a positive person i mean even before lockdown happened you were bringing a lot of joy to people with your dancing videos and things like that yeah. um, and i think at the moment so many people are finding lockdown really difficult what kind of advice do you have for people on how they can stay positive during this really surreal time i think that remember this surreal time is not going to last forever and as much as it can feel like every day when you wake up and you think, oh my God, what day is it? What week <laughs> is it? Where am I? Um, yeah. This is just a moment in history that we are all alive for and that we are living through. Um, mm. It won't last forever. It, we will look back on this and be like, yeah, what was that? But mm. I think just constantly reminding yourself that keep being kind to yourself it's not going to last forever and try as hard as you might don't compare yourself to other people and what anyone else is doing because everybody's experience of what is going on right now is completely unique to them and their world so what somebody else is doing has got nothing to do with what you're doing definitely and also as well because you're a business owner as well and so many people who follow PB they own their own beauty businesses and it's a real difficult time for them at the moment because they're people you know people focus they love seeing their clients and they can't do anything because their businesses are closed and they're very nervous I mean how have you been doing on that side of things and managing your business? I mean from as a spray tanner from that side I completely understand what it's like because I in week one put my kit away and I've not got my kit back out. I've been using the mm. products in my kit just to go through them because I'm like, I don't want them to go off or go out. So I'm like, mm. I'll just use them on myself. It's been quite nice to have a treat. <laughs> um, and I know that there's only so many times that you can clean your kit and there's only so many times that you can get organized. And I was saying to Stacey Dooley is a really good um, friend and client of mine and she doesn't live far and I said, I really miss just moisturising your hands. I really miss <laughs> the connection and I miss coming to your house. Mm. And she was like, oh, I miss it too. And actually what I've been trying to do with my clients is check in, say mm. hi, say how are you, and actually try and teach them how to tan at home. They know that there is no tan like the way that I tan them. Mm. But in this time, just having that connection and just keeping that relationship maintained is incredibly important because once it's... Once this all gets lifted, anyone in beauty is going to be so busy. Hairdressers, oh my God. Oh my God, I, I know. <laughs> I sent a picture of Cousin It to my barber and I was like, this is who will be coming into your salon after the end of this. Um, yeah. But I think it's just really, it's really important to use this time um, to build new skills. That's what I've 
been trying to do, mm -hmm. like teaching myself new things, like editing videos online and making my Instagram, you know, just having a look at it from a business side of view. What You know, you need to teach yourself new skills. You need to make sure that your Instagram is really prepped and you use this mm. time for stuff that you wouldn't have had to do and have this time before. I mean, are there any kind of tools or content ideas that you think are particularly good for um, spray tanners to be using at the moment um, by the social? Because like you said, it's a really important thing to stay in touch with clients at the moment. I think for spray tanners to show, to have a back catalogue of your work is really, really important because if somebody's never had a tan before, Instagram mm -hmm. is your book. It's essentially your back catalogue of all the tans that you've done. So yes. if your Instagram shows that you have worked with lots of different types of skin tones, lots, lots of different types of bodies, it doesn't have to be images of people. It can be reviews that somebody's left you. Mm. It can be um, the types of formulations that you use and why you use them and just make it a complete catalogue because people are going to be thinking about getting a tan. People are going to have events. Our diaries are going to fill up and they're going to want to have spray tans. So why should they choose you over somebody mm -hmm. else? And there's things like, you can use apps like Canva and PicFrame, and they're really good to create textures and make, make it look very professional online. And they don't cost, I don't think Canva costs very much money at all. And PicFrame, I think is free. Yeah. And obviously as well, you are such a big name in the industry. And I'm sure so many people would love to know your story of how you got to where you are today. Are you able to share that with us? Yes. Oh my gosh. And what a story it is. Um, so I, I never really, I never wanted to be a spray tanner. It was a job that completely found me. Um, I had, a, I worked in fashion and I worked in beauty and I, I just, I never liked desk work. It was so not for me. And I started going on shoots for editorial and being on mm -hmm. photo shoots. And I was like, I really like this. I like the connection that I'm getting with people. And I met um, facialist Nicola Joss on, oh, yeah. on a set. And she, we got on really, really well. And I think, I think she was teaching me how to massage her hands. And I was like, oh my God, this is so nice. I really like touching <laughs> like people and this connection. Yeah. And she, um, she took me under her wing and I assisted her for many, many years. And she said, you know, I think you've got what it takes to be a, a spray tanner. And I was like, Are you, what? I didn't even know that, that was a thing. But she said, you know, you'd, anybody can paint a fence. Anybody can do a physical spray tan. But to have that charisma and to have that moment where somebody opens the door and you connect with them mm. is... She said, that's something that you definitely will be able to do. And so she trained me in spray tanning. And then I really fell into my first big job. I'd been tanning for, for like two months. And I was tanning this girl and she said, oh, you're really good at spray tanning. And I was like, am I? <laughs> and I was like, well, I think I am. And she was like, well, I'm the head makeup artist on The X Factor. Would you be interested oh. in doing all those hands on The X Factor? And... I, like any 25 year old, just said yes mm. and jumped on this opportunity. And so at the time I was working five days a week in an office. And then at the weekend I was working on X Factor, <laughs> completely living like a double life. But yeah. I, just, I just followed that because it was making me feel so good. And mm. I really enjoyed work. And it wasn't necessarily about the the thing about doing spray tans that was the fun. It was the whole package. It was being with people. It was having this really exciting life. And I thought, I really, really, really enjoy this. Mm. Um, so then from the X Factor, that was the year Little Mix won. And then I started working with Little Mix. And then I got a call from Strictly Come Dancing because they'd heard that I was the good, like the spray tanner known mm. to not give orange tans and to give really natural, <laughs> healthy looking tans. Yeah. Um, and that is what I'm known for. If you want a tan mm. that looks like it's come from a bottle, I am not the spray tanner for you. Um, and yeah, I started working on Strictly for three years. And during that time, you obviously pick up every celebrity client possible. It's totally mm. that. Working on that show totally springboarded my career. Um, and then I worked on The Crown. 
And then I was working a lot with um, red carpet, traveling with clients. And um, yeah, and I launched Isle of Paradise. Yeah. So I launched Isle of Paradise um, two years ago. Um, and we were working on it for about a year and a half before that. Um, and yeah, now it's one of the top selling self tan brands. And it's totally changed the way that um, the beauty industry has seen body and body confidence. Mm. And I always try and use my position for good in the industry and make a positive change. But yeah, that has been uh, my career journey in a nutshell. Yeah, it's amazing. And like you said as well, I think you've got to really love what you do. Um, and so you've got to follow your passion. I mean, you've been in tanning for such a long time now. You must have kind of seen it all. Have there been any kind of funny or awkward moments that you've had along the way? Oh, so <laughs> many. Um, I mean, the job, working with naked bodies and mm. working in such an intimate environment, there is always funny things that happen because <laughs> you, you just, you see the most bizarre things. Um, but... <laughs> Funny side, when I was on Strictly, um, my, my first season, I'd been doing, it was right in the middle of Fashion Week, and I had to do a weekend on Strictly straight after Fashion Week before I then flew from London to um, Milan. Mm. And I had been doing all these fashion shows with oils and textures and butters and creating really, really sheeny, gleamy skin. <laughs> and one of the dancers on Strictly, they were dancing, I can't remember what, I think it was a waltz or something, and I properly oiled them up, and then they went out and danced, and the celebrity slipped off them. And I was like backstage like, oh my God, what have I done? Um, and so, yeah, that is definitely, you just learn along the way. I never carried oil at Strictly ever again. But you, you, you know, this, it's all about learning from your mistakes. And there's definitely, there's definitely been a lot of mistakes on the way. Yeah. And like you said as well, you've got into a lot of television work and that's like really amazing. And I think a lot of spray tan has kind of strive for that. Do you have any advice on how they could look for that kind of work? Is it about connections or is there certain places that you can look for it? Um, there's, well, there's lots of different types of working in television. There is working in live television, so on shows like Strictly, like mm -hmm. um, The X Factor, and those shows only run for a certain period of time. And unless you're working with a judge or somebody that's on that show right through, you'll only really do the live shows and then maybe a bit of like the houses and all that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and they're quite London-based shows. So if you're a, a tanner outside of London, it might not be for you. But there's also another side of tanning, which I only found once I'd stopped working on those kind of shows, that's working very much with makeup artists. And you do, like, continuity tans. And, like, I did uh, Matt Smith's tan for The Crown because oh, he wow. needed to look Cypriot, but also, like, he needed to look warm and he's very, he's quite pale and he needed yeah. that change in complexion and doing tans and working with makeup artists in continuity is a completely different way of working. Now, when you're working with makeup artists, it's not London centric. It's all over. You're traveling all the time. Mm -hmm. Also things like Manchester, Cor you've got Coronation Street, you've got lots of shows up there. If you're really, really, really keen to get tanning, I would find out, watch the show credits and see who is the head of makeup find that person and it's a lot easier to find a person now than it was when I was starting mm. find them on Instagram you can find them on Twitter google their name you'll be able to get in contact with them and just reach out and say do you need an assistant don't expect to get paid yeah. don't expect anything mm. in return all you want is experience and a foot in the door and it really is about being somebody who's very easy to get on with on the team because of spray tanner it's not anyone's first priority makeup mm. and hair and wardrobe is first priority tan is like a secondary priority so you've got to be very fluid you've got to yeah. work around everybody else um, and expect to work really late at night expect mm. to do calls at random times in the morning <laughs> but remember that less if one thing i learned from tanning with television and on shoots is less is more because yeah. never put on just because your client at the weekend loves a dark tan does not mean that a dark tan is going to look good on that celebrity on camera. A camera mm. makes the tan so much darker anyway. Oh, so you really? actually, yeah, you don't need as much tan on camera. Yeah. 
that is some really helpful advice because I don't know if everybody would necessarily know that. And yeah, I have to say, because I've watched The Crown and Matt looked amazing in it. So good job, Joe. Cheers, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you say has been your career highlight then? Because you've obviously done so much. Oh, gosh. I mean, there's so, there's so many highlights, I think. In terms of highlights outside of the glitterati world, highlights <laughs> include like working with clients who have overcome their cancer journey mm. and clients who have gone through... Because when you're a spray tanner like a hairdresser, you're going through the whole process with your clients, like a divorce, you're there almost every week cheering them up. And, you yeah. know, that's a very personal side of it. Um, I think in terms of a career... Working with Kate Moss, that was like a huge moment for me. Um, and I remember being on that set and I did that, I did the time for that San Pay Kate Moss shoe and I was there on that set. And that was incredible. It was a totally a, a, a moment of going, wow, I am literally at the top of my game now. Like that you can't, as a tanner, I don't think I can get any higher than this. Mm. And it was, it was a real pinch me moment. Um, but then Isle of Paradise has took my career and life moments to completely different dimensions. I never, I never wanted a self tan brand, but mm. I really felt like it was my duty because the way that traditional self tan brands were communicating about tanning to be by a pool, tanning for the yeah. weekend, tanning to look skinny, that literally was just never what tan was for me. Tan has always been confidence, feel good, mm. feel better. And I just wanted to create a brand that people started using and went, oh my God, I feel like me. I feel confident. I, mm. I feel accepted. I feel empowered in my body. And when, um, when Isle of Paradise launched, we were the first ever self tan brand to use um, a curve model. Yeah. And at the time, this sounds so alien now because amazingly, it's such a dumb thing. But at the mm. time, I can't tell you like how hard it was to even get that across the line. And mm. once oh it gosh. launched, we had so many DMs like straight into my Instagram of girls saying, I'm stood crying because I finally feel like I can use mm. tan. I feel accepted. I feel like part of this. And then a year later, we did our Get Body Posse campaign that mm. featured every type of body type from um, disabled to um, different body shapes, different skin tones, like every type of body was in there. And it was a huge movement across the internet. Yeah. And I think, you know, to say that it's a self tan brand that's changing the beauty industry, you know, there's not many brands that do this. And so it's, mm. it, it's an honor to be able to be one of the people who work for Isle of Paradise peddling and peddling and making huge, huge changes that really are going to matter for the next generation. Yeah, that campaign was amazing. And actually, I think it did start off a lot of discussion in the industry about should beauty brands be doing more to be more inclusive? Uh -huh. um, and a lot was going on with that, unfortunately, before coronavirus happened. And obviously, that's kind of taken over life. But I mean, what would you like to see more from the beauty industry going forward in terms of trying to be more inclusive? I think... Um airbrushing and retouching needs to come to a complete stop. Mm. So many times I've been on set and when you're shooting, you're on set and I'm there and I've got my mitt, I've got my tan, like I'm just touching up the skin. <laughs> the, photo yeah. the photographer shoots the model, the model is here and then over here is a little monitor and the monitor shows all the images that are coming mm. from the photographer. Now I've so many times been on set and watched that monitor to see that there's no mess up in the tan and I can see every bit of the skin, the gorgeous body that it is. Yeah. Six months later, I'll open a magazine and that person's been airbrushed completely. All the cellulite's mm -hmm. been taken out, body hair's been removed, wrinkles have been removed, and it's just lying. It's lying to consumers and it's not fair. And mm -hmm. I don't think, I just find that side of the industry really difficult to mentally process your lines to a consumer to make them buy a product that isn't going to do what it does in the image because you've airbrushed yeah. it. What? So that is definitely <laughs> yeah. something that needs to, that definitely needs to come to an end. And also I want body positivity to really start opening up. So talking 
the trans world definitely needs more voice um mm. gender fluidity i think these are areas and disabilities we need to not see it as a token disabled person we need to see it as they are celebrated as an individual um and mm. i also think that we should be casting on achievements it doesn't matter what you look like it's because actually what you look like is not necessarily the most interesting thing about yourself yeah. what you've done what you've achieved what are your beliefs that is interesting let's celebrate that mm. so many people are agreeing with you in the comments by the way saying that's why they love your brand and love you and you know bravo and this is amazing this is what the industry needs and i wholeheartedly agree with you i think there needs to be more inclusivity across the board um because it can be really damaging for people's mental health and so you know I totally agree. One thing I did want to ask you actually about Isle of Paradise, and this is a question we get asked a lot of PB, is obviously you started your own product brand. And for a lot of people, that's like a, a goal they'd love to achieve in their career. Um, were there any challenges along the way when you were starting that up that you wish you had known about before you started it? <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, of course. Well, there's things, um, we, I mean, Isle of Paradise is the first ever colour corrective self tan brand. So when you're doing something the first, mm. obviously not everything works the way that you want it to work. And yeah. it, there's lots of things, you have to put everything in testing and stability and using the colour corrective theory. Yes, that might, in the early days, there were things that weren't passing stability. And that is just so natural for any brand that starts off. Mm. Um, I, don't, I don't believe in regrets or anything that I would have done differently because I wouldn't be where I am now mm. and I think that I apply that to everything um so yeah but there's always things where you're like oh we could have just done that so much simpler and we could that could have <laughs> taken like no time in the original days um it, it said by jewels on the bottle mm. and I ummed and ahed about having my name on the on the tan and then I remember saying to a friend I was like just I just don't want this brand to be about me I want it mm. to be about the person in the bathroom that's using the tan and it's making them feel better or the person who's decanting it into their spray gun. I don't want this mm. to be about me. I want it to be about them. Um, so Isle of Paradise, I don't know if you know why it's called what Isle of Paradise. Mm. It means, I thought about the moment that tan takes you to. So there's oh a moment God. when you look in the mirror the next day and you've had a shower and you've got a freshly applied tan and you look in the mirror and you go, oh, I feel like <laughs> me. I feel so much more confident. And you put on your outfit and you shut that door and you're like, I am going to nail today. I'm going <laughs> to do it. That yeah. feeling is euphoric. And that's what Tan does. And for me, that is the Isle of Paradise. It's that feeling. And so mm -hmm. that's what it means. And that's what we're all about. Of just making somebody feel the way that they're feeling. It's not about my career. And it's not about what I've done. Mm -hmm. It's literally about you, your day, your vibe. Go and live your life. Yeah, and like you said as well, I guess if someone was considering launching a range into the beauty industry, whether it's tanning or something else, you need to have a really strong USP, I guess, um, because there is so much competition in the market. Oh my God, there's so much competition. And, you know, it's it's hard. It, it's You really have to think about what can I not get? So with Isle of Paradise, I was mixing colour corrective makeup with tan in my kit. My kit was massive, like two mm. huge suitcases. I was driving like a big mum mobile. I was like, <laughs> I don't even have any kids. Like, I look like I've got seven kids. Um, and so the need was there because I needed it. I needed product that didn't take up all this space. So if you're thinking about launching a brand, don't just launch a brand that's like everything else because it yeah. will be so much harder for you what is the usp is it eco are you mm. are you making a change are you recycling are you changing that are you communicating to a specific demographic is there a need there um mm. what you know there's a, a brand isn't just about a good product the good product is the core and that's the heart because if your product's good it makes everything else a lot easier it's when your product's yeah. not good that you just see brands and you're like what are you doing why are you still here mm. But it's everything else that comes with it. You've got to have a soul within your brand. And you really have to believe, you have to believe why you're doing it. Like mm. Annie Mack once said to me, she said, you know, never underestimate the power of your passion. And it's so true. Mm. I've never, ever, ever been in this game for money. Never. It's not interested me. And I'm not driven by money. I'm driven by experience. I'm driven by 
um, self-worth, making people mm. feel better. And so you have to think, why am I doing this? You have to constantly, ask, my business partner always says to me, why, why? And mm. you, the more you ask yourself why, the more you justify each move and also maybe a move that isn't gonna go in that, diff in, a, in that direction. Yeah, and like you said as well, I think the whole point about sustainability as well and being eco-friendly, that's becoming um, a bigger thing for consumers. They're becoming much more aware about it. So I think mm -hmm. brands really need to shout about what they're doing in that arena mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I did also want to ask you, Jules, you know, because um, we get asked all the time, but I'd love to know your opinion on what is the top kind of tanning, troubleshooting issue that people ask for your advice on the most? Oh, all the time, hands and feet and back. Literally, <laughs> that's all I get asked. So with your hands, and everybody will have a different opinion because everybody has found out their own little ways in doing it. But for me, a, a foolproof way, whether you're tanning at home or whether you're a professional, is it is all in the buff. Everything. Mm -hmm. If in doubt, blend it out. I <laughs> hate, and I, I will... I really come down on my assistants quite hard if they mess hands up because I can't bear hands that have got tan stuck here, stuck in the knuckles, mm. especially because we work a lot with presenters. So they're holding the microphone. It's the yes. first thing you see on TV. Mm. So when you're tanning a body, you moisturize the hands and you moisturize the feet before you do the tan. You apply the tan and at the end, you apply this one sweep, one tiny sweep over the hands or one mm. light spray over the hands leave it for a couple of minutes and then re-moisturize the hand. Now, the moisturizing isn't gonna take away the color, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna blend it. So it's gonna blend it in the knuckles, it's gonna blend it all around the wrists. You then buff the wrist here with a, with a yes. buffing mitt or with a flannel or with a kabuki brush and then wipe the nails and in between the fingers and just put a tiny bit of micellar water on the palms and it'll just Ooh. take off any excess tan. But yeah. it's those kind of tricks. Like the whole reason you're using tan is to look like you've been on vacation. Yeah. You're not using it to look like you've had a spray tan or look <laughs> like you've got bought a bottle of tan. So you have to think, where does the sun hit me? Is, mm. Does it hit me on my face? Yeah. Does it hit me on the soles of my feet? No. Does it hit me on my ankles and cling to my ankles? No. So what are you <laughs> going to do about it? You're going to buff it off and blend it out. Yeah, I think that's really solid advice. And yeah, what you said as well about presenters, their hands being on show the most, that totally makes sense. Um, I guess as well, um, it'd be great to know your advice on tanning clients with mobility issues as well. Like, is there anything you kind of need to do in treatment to tailor it to make it a more comfortable experience for them? With clients um, and mobility issues, you really need to be very upfront and honest with them and mm. don't pussyfoot around like the issue because they know how much that they can move their body so you just mm. need to ask them and don't be scared or nervous because mm. ultimately you're being booked to give them a tan you want to give them the best tan that you could possibly give exactly like any client whether they have a disability issue or not um, now when I was working with Tess Daly who is a disabled influencer she she I remember the first time I worked with her she was like I didn't think I could have tan. And I said, mm. well, of course you can, but I just have to, we have to work together. So Tess can only move two of her fingers and she can talk and move her face, but she can't move anything else on her body. Right, yeah. Your arm, are you okay with me lifting your leg? Are you gonna be in pain? Like, how do you want to do this? Also check in with carers. When is, do you have a full-time carer? Or mm. how is this carer going to, when are you having a bath? When are they going to sponge this tan off? With, um, when I work with Tess, I always use a tan with a guide colour. So it has that cosmetics yeah. finish. Yeah. Just so the carer can properly take all that top coat off. Because I can't help, if, if I was going to help Tess take it off, I'd have to be with her for the whole eight hours for it to shower. So the carer's <laughs> obviously going to take it off. But it just means that, you know, everyone can enjoy the benefits of tan. And I have lots of, once we, once I worked with Tess and I released a video to show mm. me doing it, I had so many amazing messages from people across the world saying, I've just got my carer to book a tanner. Obviously, yeah. it, you have to hand apply. So mm. mousse and mitt, that's how you're going to do it. You can't spray tan a client because the pressure and the way that it's going onto the skin, if someone has mobility issues and they've got to stay in their wheelchair or they've got to be on the bed, 
you're just yeah. it's just not going to work you're going to have to massage it in um but it's worth it no definitely and i think that's such solid advice that you've given as well um for you jules obviously because you do get to see so many clients you've got your own product range and everything are there kind of any tanning trends that people should be aware of that are coming in this year or are there any kind of tanning looks that are falling a little bit out of favor um there are some trends coming in but i can't tell you about it because it involves new products ah. um, but skin <laughs> texture it's all about skin texture and you know i love skin te texture mm. um i think I think what we're going to see after this whole experience is people really using tan to feel better. I think mm -hmm. we're going to see a huge, I think if I had a salon, I would be massively offering block bookings on tan. I'd be saying like, you know, come in a bit like when you have a coffee, you get your temp coffee free, you get your temp tan free, yeah, yeah. Um, subscriptions, um, because people now have seen what the benefits of tan does. I don't think we're going to be able to internationally travel for quite some time. And yeah. so in terms of being a tanner, it really is the time to capitalize on being able to give that hot post holiday vacation feel yeah. in a matter of hours and in minutes for the application. And I think, you know, they're really the trends that we're going to see of people being really invested in tan and realizing that this is going to make me feel better. And mm -hmm. so how are you going to do that in, in terms of your professional environment? Like I would definitely be offering like temp tan free, fifth tan free tanning parties. Like yeah. if you can't have people in a salon, if you can go to a house or like tanning each other or even like zoom masterclasses, I think we're going to mm -hmm. see like a huge shift yeah i think you're right as well because i think as soon as kind of lockdowns lifted and businesses can start reopening again i think it's made clients realize how much they actually miss the spray tanner the therapist the nail tech and i actually mm -hmm. think these businesses are going to be really busy which would be great for the industry after a time of you know sustained closure um but they were all my questions jules it's been so lovely talking to you and seeing you and thank you so much for coming on the live we really appreciate it Oh, it's been heaven. It's been absolute heaven. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you. And I hope you stay safe and healthy. And hopefully I'll get to see you at some point in the future when we can all network again and, you know, have normal lives again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you, everybody, for joining. And we will see you all next week. But thanks so much, Jules. Go grab everyone. See you later. Bye. 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 bye.